G'day everybody and welcome to another DUC Migrating to Australia podcast. On this episode, I'm joined by Neely Price and Lisa Chambers. We'll hear Neely's story, uh, what it was like for visa grants during the pandemic, and we'll ask a few other questions. So, uh, Lisa, Neely, welcome. Hi, Wes. Hi, guys. Hi, Wes. Hi, Lisa. So, Neely, we've got a very strong Welsh accent, so we can assume you are from Wales. And whereabouts in Wales are you from? So, I'm from a place called Pontypool, which is about 40 minutes from Cardiff. Everyone knows Cardiff, so it just makes more sense to say Cardiff. Yeah, and and how have the um, how are the Australians working with your accent and everything like that? Yourself and Robbie, are they have you fitted in all right, or are they you know do they sort of because I I actually really like the Welsh accent. It's I think it's it's a great little accent, but um, it's not. I don't know, like as as an Aussie, it's not something we hear all the time in Australia. Have you noticed any smirks yeah. or any questions? So they struggle in work. They struggle to understand me. Um, I've got to kind of speak a little slower now with people. Um, but they don't They don't know that it's Welsh. They always say, what part of England are you from? And then I've got to say, I'm from Wales. And they go, oh, what part of England's Wales? And I'm like, no, it's a different country. <laughs> but they don't, they don't get that. Yeah, it's so, it's so strange. Growing up in school in Australia, we don't really do much about Europe. In the UK, so but anyway, for, for you know, for the record, it's a wonderful accent. Um, so let's just run through. So you're so so you are in WA at the moment, and you've yes. made the move to Australia. And 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 who joined you on the move to Australia? So my husband Robbie, and then our two children, Lacey and Jude. Uh, Lacey's twelve, and Jude is two. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Now Robbie is a plumber, and I know this because I was one of his assessors. Yes, she was, yeah. Yeah, and we've also got young Jude in the background as well. He's got, here's our special comments for today, guys. Um, so what, let's, when you thought about making the move to Australia, um, how did you go about it? Whose idea was it? Um, it was actually mine. Um, we thought, well, we wanted to do it, oh gosh, it was like six years ago, and we kind of did a bit of research and then when it came down to it, we chickened out <laughs> and we just felt, well, we felt quite comfortable in the UK and we just felt like we'd be giving up too much if we moved. So we decided not to do it. And then it all came back up again during COVID. And that's when we contacted the DUC. Okay. So, so what were one of the decisions to, obviously to make the moves one thing, because at that point, it's just a thought. And then something to sort of turn around and say, we do feel comfortable. What were those factors? Um, it was during lockdown. So it was the first lockdown and we were all off work. Um, we weren't allowed to go anywhere. And we had really, really lovely weather. And I remember spending that month of lockdown in the garden. And I, it just kind of, we just thought, you know what, this is the lifestyle we want. We want to be outside. We want to be on barbecues and just spend more time together as a family. And it was it was then that we thought, do you know what, let's do it. If we don't do it, we're going to regret not trying. Okay. And and you mentioned Lacey's 12. Now, I know Lacey's nearly 13 in November. Um, yeah. But she, you know, at the time, so what are we talking about? Was that 2019, 2020? Uh, 2020 it was, yes. 2020. So how do you say to a 10-year-old girl that you're looking to move to the other side of the world? At the time, she was all for it. When So 2020, she was all for it. Um, you know, she was excited. But then when it came down to it two years later and we got the visas, she was totally against it. <laughs> wow. So, what changed? Just those extra, you know, that time that, you know, yes. the So she started comp, so high school. And, um, yeah, I think she just grew up so much in those two years. Um she just didn't want to leave her friends. It, it was the friends for her. Um, so, yeah, it was it was tough, very and tough. How do you approach that situation? We we just kind of said, you know, look, we'll we'll do it. We won't put a time frame on it. Um, we, we'll give ourselves kind of like two years, not say it's forever. And we did kind of say to her at the time, look, if one of us don't like it or if one of us can't settle, then we will move back. Probably shouldn't have said it in that respect because when we did get here, that's the first thing she said was, "You promised me if one of us didn't like it, we could move." <laughs> and um, how long was that into the arriving in WA? Did she say that? 
I feel it did. It was probably, oh gosh, um, maybe three, four weeks in. So straight so, yeah. up. So yeah, we wasn't actually here that long and she already wanted to go. For her, what do you believe the turning point? Is she happy in WA at the moment? She is. She's very happy now. Um, it was when she started school over here. Um, she just felt like she didn't fit in. Um, and I think this was another thing with our accent. Lacey talks quite quick as well. And she just said, like, she was trying to make conversation with people. And I don't know whether they were struggling to understand her, but she didn't see it like that. She just felt like she nobody wants to be her friend, basically. But um, within, my gosh, a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe a month after her start in high school, she just settled with this lovely group of friends and completely changed. She completely changed. So she, yeah, she went from making life really difficult to, well, she she was she was doing better than me and Robbie. Yeah, interesting, really interesting. It's um, yeah, well, it is challenging, obviously, as we as anyone who's migrated will know. But the way that you dealt with it sounds like it went well. Did you have like were you concerned that you were going to have to go back a little bit earlier? Did you did you and Robbie ever have a you know a little private chat away from Lacey? We didn't know. Um, we kind of just said, you know, we, we've got to stick it out. You know, we've we spent an absurd amount of money on getting here. Um, you know, the, the, the stress, the, you know, the emotions of telling family. We just thought we, we've moved our life, basically. We sold everything and we wasn't going to give up, you know, after a month. We needed to give it time. And, we, you know, you said, you know, it does cost lots of money to get to Australia. Um, what? How did you, did you guys have money there or did you, you said you sold things. Was that selling it because you were leaving and, uh, and you know, you wanted, the, you, know, you wanted the money when you arrived or were you in a position to afford the visa? I know we only charge in stages and it gets, you know, with the skills assessment, the plumbing skills assessments, the highest skills assessment. Yes. It requires a practical assessment. Uh, and then you got the visa cost. So did yeah. you guys um, financially were fine during that period or you just had to change yeah. it? No, lifestyle? we had, you know, we 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 funded, we were fine uh, with the visas and the cost to get here. That was all fine. And then um, we just, we wanted to sell everything. Like we didn't want to bring all the furniture um, just because we just wanted to start fresh when we got here. So that's the reason why we sold everything. Uh, we already had all our savings, which, you know, we use for our visa and um, skills assessment. Robbie's had to do his gap training since being here. So that was obviously money on top again. Um, but we we knew we, you know, we prepared ourselves for every bit of money that we needed to spend. Yeah, so guys, for listeners out there, for licensed trades, plumbers, electricians and refrigeration mechanics, a completion of the skills assessment, they'll receive an OTSR, which which in WA uh, will gain the plumber a provisional registration and then they've got a 12-month period. It can be done before 12 months. Again, it's the gap between what they know and what they need to know for under Australian standards. And then they'll complete the gap training and then do a bit of e-profiling, which is, uh, which is on the job. So, okay, so you made contact with the Down to Centre. Do you remember who you first spoke to? I think it was yourself, actually, Wes. Yeah, perfect. And yeah. was it at an event or you just you just called the, um, you know, our main office? No, we called your main office. Okay. So we had a conversation and we would have run through the points and we, and we would have explained the process. And after coming out of that conversation, were you, you know, were you confused? Were you excited? How, you know, how were you emotionally back then? No, really excited. We just wanted to start it as soon as possible. <laughs> okay, so you start the process now. Did we? Did you have access to the client portal, or did you get the box with the um, with the folder in it? No, we had the client portal. Ah, excellent. And and how did you find the client portal to work through? Um, it well, Robbie obviously had to do all the sections because we went under his trade. Um, but again, this was during lockdown, so we had the time to kind of sit and do it. Um, there was a lot of scanning, a lot of kind of like wage slips and everything we had to scan over, but we had the time to do it because we were all off work. So we, to be fair, you know, we, we found that quite, quite simple. And, and in the UK, was Robbie self-employed, employed or a mixture of both? At that time, he was employed. Okay. So it's a little bit easier if you're employed to get the documents. Self-employed um, takes a little bit longer. I actually remember meeting you nearly actually after Robbie's practical assessment. 
in our yep. uh, London office and we nicked across, you know, we went across the road to the Irish pub. Uh, yep. Do you remember that? We had, we, uh, we had a beer and a good old chat. Yeah, I do, yes. I think you. I think there was a few other plumbers there. Do you, do you, do you ever keep in contact with the other plumbers at Sadie's Practical Assessment that day? Oh, we know a plumber that is in Perth, but I'm not sure if he was actually on the skills assessment with Robbie. It was Craig. Oh, I'm not sure. Not yeah, sure. Yeah, we've kept in touch with those because they're in Perth as well, but we're yet to meet them yet. Okay, excellent. Yeah, we've got lots. I mean, look, Perth's a destination um, state for, for many migrants looking to make the move. Yeah. All right. So, so and, and how did he go with his English test? Um, he'd done really well, actually. He he sat it twice. Um, just the first time he only got the 10 points, which was enough, but Robbie wanted to redo it to, to try and push for the 20 points. And he did. He got it on the second time. Excellent. So we, so we, so we get to skills assessment stage. He nails that. He obviously did really well at the English test, getting the high score on the second time. Yep. You then put in the uh, state nomination, or you know, we assisted obviously with that. And then you, from from when he did his skills assessment to getting the visa granted, was it what was a rough time scale there? Um, I think he did his skills assessment round about October, November, twenty twenty, and then we had we had our visa in August, twenty twenty two. Wow. And that's what we talk about those, you know, that pandemic, that weight. You know, how did you feel about it? Did you feel that you, um, you know, invested so much money? Did you did you believe at that time that Australia was always on the cards or, or, or were you anxious and, and a bit worried about it? We were worried, yeah. We wasn't sure if it was going to happen because when we first um, applied in the June, uh, we thought, you know, by Christmas, the, the uh, COVID and everything would have been kind of done. But Australia shut their borders then, I think, in the January 2021. Um, so obviously visas wasn't getting granted. Um, borders were shut anyway. So, yeah, we were just living in limbo. We just didn't know if it was going to happen. You know, we wanted to decorate the house and do things to the house, but we just, we didn't know. We, we were, Literally, we were just at a standstill. It's crazy, crazy times, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> like just for everyone involved in that pandemic, not even people migrating to Australia. Everyone, I think everyone did it tough. So and okay, so you remained in the house, um, and that's a house that you guys owned, and and is is that correct? Was your property? Yes, it was our property. Yes. Yep. So you bit through. You didn't. You know. You you're not really keen on sort of doing it up. You stayed committed to Australia. I'm sure there would have been some tough conversations a few times over a glass of wine or something when you yeah, are you making the was. right move and everything. Yes, there was many. <laughs> Yeah. And the kids, you know, obviously Jude, so young, um, might've been being pre-Jude actually, if he's two. Um, but Lacey, she was, uh, you know, was she talking about Australia a lot during that stage while you're waiting for the visas or was she, no. or was this when she was about to turn and start getting a bit anxious and a bit worried about her new life? No, because at the time, because we wasn't hundred percent sure it was going to happen because of the pandemic, um, we we didn't tell people, so I was self-employed at the time, so obviously I didn't want any clients finding out, just in case, you know, it, it never come off, just in case we didn't move. Um, so Lacey was the same, you know, we, we asked her not to tell her school or her friends. Um, so it was kind of eating away at her as well, because, you know, she she was bottling all this up, and I think she just wanted to tell people and talk to people about it. But we we just felt as a family to keep it to ourselves until we knew it was definitely going to happen. So, at what point did you start telling family and friends that you um, were moving to Australia? Oh my goodness! I think we we'd mentioned it to family, and we kind of just kind of put the feelers in. Um, but again, we kind of kept saying to them, "Look, we don't know. We've applied, but we don't know if we're even going to get the visa. You know, it all." kind of depends on what happens with the pandemic so I think family didn't really know what we were going to do either um and I think it was we got our visa in the August 22 it was pretty much when we got the visa that was when we kind of I told work Robbie told work uh, Lacey told her friends so it was only when we actually got the visa that we said we are going Okay, so you got the visa at, at, at that point. And then how long did it take for you to actually get on the plane and, and arrive in WA? Uh, January the 12th. Uh, so, yeah, we got the visa August last year and we got here in January this year. 
Okay. So we booked the flights pretty much straight away. Yeah, excellent. So, so like most people do, well, I guess it would have felt important to have one last Christmas in the UK. We did, yeah, one last Christmas with family. Was it hard, you know, having that Christmas very, and everyone knowing it was the last Christmas? It was hard, yeah, very hard. Um, we because our move coop was coming. I think it was the fifth of January. So, but we didn't want to kind of start boxing anything up because I wanted my house to look, you know, Christmassy and make it one special event. Um, so yeah, we, we just spent that last Christmas as a family and then it was just a mad, mad rush after Christmas to get everything packed. So Neely, you mentioned earlier that furniture and all that was for sale. Uh, and then you mentioned a move cube. So, so, yeah. so what was, what made it to the move cube? Um, boxes of sort of personal belongings. I think we had about 50 something boxes, um, we did bring a few kitchen things, you know, like plates and mugs. Um, we did bring our bedroom furniture. That's the only bit of furniture we did bring. Um, oh, and the nursery furniture. But things like we didn't bring beds. Uh, none of Lacey's bedroom furniture came. Um, like sofas, table and chairs, we sold all of that. It was just kind of like, you know, our... Our little keepsakes that we wanted to bring over and put up around the house just to make it feel like home back home. Yeah, yeah, that's a good bit, a bit of memorabilia. Fifty yeah. boxes though—that's that's that's quite a lot. Or at the time yeah, when you're looking, we, at, when you're looking at fifty boxes, where you're thinking, "Oh, we can easily fit this," or you're getting to a point where you have to start making decisions: what makes it into the box and what doesn't make it into the box. No, we were lucky. Everything that we wanted to bring in the move queue uh, did fit, except Robbie's bike. That was the only thing. Um, like a couple of days before, that wouldn't. F- oh no, actually, I think it was the day or the two days before we couldn't fit the bike in. So um, yeah, he had to sell his bike. Class last minute but everything else we managed to fit has he ever forgiven you about the bike um he's forgiven me he hasn't forgiven Lacey because Lacey was adamant she wants to bring her bike so we managed to fit her bike in and since being here she's not even used the bike once she doesn't want to use the bike so we could have left hers and brought Robbie's (laughs) Oh, no. So Robbie's cruising around Perth with a basket in the front of his little bike, is he? Yeah, he's actually on the hunt for a bike at the moment. (laughs) Oh, there you go. There you go. All right. And now we know, um, well, I know this, that you guys, when you arrived in in Australia, you had a place to go to. We Um, did. Just explain how, how that happened. Yeah, so my best friend who used to live in the UK, she moved over six years ago. Um, and she's living in the area that we're living in now. And friends of hers were going off traveling for six months and they just kind of wanted someone to house sit. So we rented their house for the six months that they were away. So we had that to go to as soon as we arrived. So, yeah, we were really, really lucky. So you knew for the people that you were moving into the house, did you have a Skype or did you chat with them prior or, or did you literally yes. walk up with yeah, them? We, we chatted on messenger a few times um discussed obviously um the rent she asked what sort of because the house was furnished as well and um, she kind of asked do you mind if we leave you know the furniture which was fine with us because we didn't have anything when we when we arrived um so yeah we did speak quite a few times how did it work with the move cube nearly you know obviously you can't go around taking off their memorabilia and putting photos of of you and the family up in that six month period so where was all the move cube boxes did you arrange that to come later or did that go into storage no it, it didn't arrive until may i think it was end of may i think it was like beginning of may so we were without all of our stuff for the first a good few months to start with anyway um, and I struggled with that because I just felt it didn't feel like home to begin with. Because like you said, we didn't have none of our own photos up. You know, we were sitting on someone else's sofa. So I struggled for the first couple of months because we didn't have our things. Um, but then even when the move cube arrived, we just stored all the boxes in the garage because it was a bit pointless to unload everything when our lease was up in the July so we didn't kind of want to put everything in the rental. We wanted to wait until we got our own place. It, it is really strange, isn't it? But we, we did the similar. We arrived in the pandemic and, and had yeah. an Airbnb. And at that point, it was easy because no one was able to get out. So there was Airbnb, yeah. Airbnbs everywhere. 
Um, but it's so weird, isn't it? You open like the shed up, you get you get there and you're a couple of weeks into it, you think, oh, what's in this? You open the shed up and you see all their toys and all their stuff. You think, oh, God, I wish I could play with that. When I say toys, just to be clear, everyone out there, the place I stayed at had a bowling machine. Um, so I wanted to like get that out, like a cricket bowling machine thing and start you know, practicing cricket. Um, anyway, but you do, you feel weird. You are living in someone else's house yeah. and you just want to get into your own space because that, that really helps get settled. It, you know, would you agree? It does. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was only when we got our own place that I started to feel more settled and Robbie would definitely agree. What what was in, what, what was the one thing nearly that you thought, oh, I can't wait to open that box and get out. What was it? Oh, probably you'll laugh now. Probably my shark hoover. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, one of the girls off the DUC actually said to me, make sure you take your hoover. And she said she wishes that she bought another one in the UK and actually, you know, brought that over as well, just in case her one that she brought packed in. Did so, you, yeah. so, so, so with, the, with the move cube and a hoover, I know you've got to clean everything out. What do you do? You just take out the bag and just make sure there's no dust or any particles in it. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, we had to, what, in order now for it to go in the move cube, do you mean, to get through yeah, customs? Yeah, we have to get through customs. Oh, yeah. we Rob. Well, Robbie did it. Had to thoroughly take the hoover apart and completely clean it of any dust. So it, it was like brand new. Because pandemic time, our, like, like our shipping container was meant to arrive, I think it was – November 21 yeah. yeah November 21 but with all the delays with um like the shipping companies and the containers and everything that was going on we actually didn't get it till just after Christmas which was a bit annoying because our Christmas stuff was packed in it all the Christmas right. you know for the young family yeah but it was so delayed um but what a day it is when you can finally open those boxes oh, it, it was like Christmas it was like Christmas when we opened everything so special. So, all right. So, um, let's let's talk a little bit about Robbie. So, Robbie, who, who's he? You know, he's, he's he's working now and everything. Is he? Um, is he? Is he liking working as a plumber? Yeah, he is. So he had, I think, he had three interviews when we first arrived, and he got all three jobs. Um, he went with the one that was a permanent role, just because we knew we needed one of us to be on a permanent role to buy a house. Um. He is quite far from where we live, so he has got a commute every day. Did struggle in the beginning with that, um, but he's he's getting used to it now. You know, he's he's in the middle of doing his gap training, and yeah, I think he's used to the early morning starts so, <laughs> and being stuck in traffic. Yep, yeah, yeah, the traffic's everywhere. Um, um, so, wh- whereabouts just just whereabouts are you in Perth exactly? So we're in Baldivas, <laughs> so we're south. Not a problem. And your um, when when he arrived, it's very challenging not having a vehicle. So when he got the job, did that job come with a car, or you had to? Did he have to go out and buy his own work van? No, he had to go and buy um, a car. So he did that pretty much straight away. Um, yeah, he doesn't unfortunately didn't get offered a work vehicle. But we would have needed the two cars, and I'm not sure what they like over here with work vehicles. I know back home you you can only use the vehicle for work, so it you know it was fine. Robbie would have needed a separate car anyway. To myself, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's yeah, that's really good. Okay, and so he gets there, he starts working, he's liking it. Is 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 have you noticed like financially? Are you, are you better off financially in in Australia or, or back in Wales? I think. Oh, once Robbie completes his gap training um, and he gets his license over here, then I suppose, um, then he will be on a better wage to what he was on in the UK. Um, I think whilst he's still doing his training, um, it, it is a lower wage because I, he's not classed as a qualified plumber yet. Um, but yeah, once he gets his license, um, then yes, we will be better off. Okay. At the moment, I'd say we're about the same. All right. Uh, and we've got, you mentioned that you bought a house. Um, yeah. So how was that? Was, you know, was that challenging? Was that quite easy? No, it was challenging. <laughs> um, we put two offers in on two houses before this one and people are just mental. Um, same with rentals. They like gold dust. And we were finding that as soon as a house went on the market, it was on there for a day and then it would sell. 
And we got out, well, people offered 50,000 more than the asking price. And that's how we lost the last house. Um, but yeah, we, we found this one private. We didn't go through an agent. We found it private. It's interesting because we're talking pandemic times as well. So all house yeah. prices around, you know, coastal areas and all that were just going through the roof because everyone, every, like no one knew when it was going to end. I know where no. I am at the moment, prices jumped up. And so yeah. the pandemic hit, it sort of, you know, went back down pretty quick. Yeah. yeah it's um, it's tough. The whole pan, you know, making the move in the pandemic. But it's one of those things, Neil, isn't it? You, you don't know what it's like not to make the move in the pandemic because you've only done it exactly. during the pandemic. Yeah, exactly. And it, I think it just made us realise that life's too short. You know, you've you just got to, if you want to try something, you've got to do it. Otherwise, you'll regret it. Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, it's definitely it, it's yeah, it's really good, and it, and it's so interesting to hear the um, the lifestyle that you have. But let's go in a little bit a, a bit deeper in that one. So yeah. your lifestyle compared to Wales to where you are now, you know, if you could rate them, you know, if if, if there was big differences, what would it be? Oh, just so much better here. Um, I just feel like in the UK, you know, you go to work, you come home from work, and you have tea, you go to bed, you just stuck in because the weather's so poor. Um, you know, over here, we make the effort after work, we go to the beach, we watch the sunset, or we'll go down the foreshore and we'll get fish and chips on the beach. Um, yeah, we, we just do more. Like we, I think we make the effort a lot more here, but it's not even like you need to make the effort because as soon as the sun's out, you know, you want to be out doing things and exploring and seeing different places. And there is, there's so much to see and do. And and making friends and everything like that, was that, um, you mentioned you had your best friend who was already here, who helped you with the property. Yeah. Uh, through the school and everything, through Lacey's school, you know, I guess they're a little bit older. Um, did you, like, like, were you invited in WhatsApp groups, community groups with, you know, with the other mothers and everything? I've not really, I, I've met a few of Lacey's uh, friends, parents, um, just where they've kind of had sleepovers, you know, and a quick message just to check it's okay. But I've not actually um, met them like to kind of go out with. Um, I'm on a WhatsApp group with uh, DUC girls um, who are south, and we've got a few kind of nights out planned, and you know, we get together with the kids. Um, so, so yeah, mainly through the DUC, that's where I've kind of picked up friends and then my best friends, friends, obviously that was already here. I've made friends with those too. We we are a lovely bunch, aren't we, Lisa? Oh, you are. <laughs> we, um, yeah, it's, yeah. And I've got, well, look, this has been really good. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get, um, Lisa, Lisa's got a few little questions she'd like to ask you as well. Yeah. Um, awesome. Over to you, Lisa. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Wes. And thanks so much for um, joining us, Neely. Um, just listening to your story about moving during the pandemic, um, that must have been like a really difficult journey. And one thing that that resonated that Wes said was that you don't know what it was like to move um, not during a pandemic. Um, yeah. yeah, so that is that is true. And just on the flip side, um, I arrived about three or four months before the pandemic hit. So I'm just learning what life is like in Australia, not in a pandemic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So you arrived in January, so that's that summertime in Australia. What was it like going from the Welsh winter to the Australian summer? It was hot, but apparently the summer that they've just had wasn't one of the hottest. So, I mean, that was hot enough, and that was just kind of like low to mid-30s, I think we got. Um, <laughs> whereas, well, people have said, just be prepared, because this summer, you know, you're talking 40 plus. So I'll let you know after this summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so what you went from like I guess minus temperatures someday oh, yeah. to 30, yeah? Yes, yeah. yeah. And I, it was great. We we loved the sun, so you know, we we loved yeah. it. Do you feel like you've acclimatized to the weather? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And Definitely. how long do you think that took you to acclimatize when you moved over? Um, I'd say a couple of months in, um, even when it kind of got to, you know, like 19, 20 degrees here, to me, that was cold. I had to go and buy a dressing gown. Whereas mm -hmm. back home, you know, 19, 20 degrees, we'd be in shorts and t-shirts in the garden having a barbecue. But to me now, that temperature's cold. Yeah. So you live South Perth and what kind of made you choose Perth? 
Uh, we chose Perth because um, one reason, because my friend was already here. Um, and I think you get more for your money with regards to properties. Like we, we did look at the Gold Coast side and Sydney, but um, my brother lives in Sydney and, you know, he said, you know, you wouldn't kind of get a four bedroom house with a pool for the price that we got this for. So, yeah, I think Perth, we just we, we were just told, you know, it's more kind of like family orientated. And, yeah, I think it helped knowing people here. Is it? Yeah. Really? And is it family orientated? It is. Yes. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. And do you spend more time like at the beach in the parks or do you go to the city a lot? No, beach and parks. I've only yeah. been to the city once, maybe twice. How long does it take you to get to the city from where you live? Uh, car, I would pr- about 50 minutes, maybe just under. Um, but to be fair, we I've not drove. We we just get on the train. Train takes you straight in. Okay, so any favourite beach? Oh, um, we go to Secret Harbour Beach a lot because it's literally ten minutes from us, if that. Um, but I love Rockingham. It's just nice and flat. This shallow water, so the kids can just go in with their feet. It's not like a rough wave beach. Um, and then you've got the bars and kind of like the fish and chip shop. So probably Rockingham. Yeah. And do you find the water there is quite safe for dudes as well? In Rockingham, yeah, because it's, yeah. it's quite shallow and flat. So, yeah, if anything mm-hmm. comes in, I think you'd see it. Um, done any like paddle boarding on the flat water? Do you know what? We haven't yet. No, but that is on my to do list this year for summer. Sorry, Neely, just going back a second, you said if something comes in, you will see it. Are you referring to our shark friends? I am, yes. You are. And, and was, was getting to WA or where you're living now, were you worried about sharks? Um, I was a little bit. Um, and then when, when we got here, you know, we heard of a few different uh, shark spots and uh, there was quite a nasty shark attack. So that's kind of made me a little bit more nervous now. You're not a fan of spiders either? Oh, God, no, no. Have you seen any? No. <laughs> um, I walk into a room and I scan it from top to bottom um, and I'd have to move out. If there was a huntsman in my house, I'd have to leave. Have you seen spiders, Lisa? I have, many. Mm-hmm. Really? What? What? My cat loves to chase spiders. No. Oh my god, I can't. (laughs) Really? Um, I mean, because I've probably, I think I've maybe taken one hat huntsman off a wall in two years. Did you even take it off the wall? Just with my hat. Just just huntsman. How about snakes? How about snakes? Because yesterday I was out for a walk. I was talking to one of our relocation agents, and a big snake just slithered out in front of me. Wow. What the heck was it? Massive, massive. I, I, I was walking along the edge of the railway tracks and the railway tracks are like on the edge of some uh, op- some open land, I guess. And I guess it, it had slivered across into the housing estate where I live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. What, but, was it a point, like, what did it look like, Lisa? It like- was a big brown snake. It was oh, a big right. brown snake, yeah, yeah, okay. one of the bad no ones. No, so I actually um, was pretty scared, yeah. <laughs> um, so with with the um, sharks as well, do they have the planes that go up and down the coast? Because where I live in Adelaide, they have like shark spotter planes that go up and down the coast and they let off sirens when they see sharks. Oh, I've not seen that here. They make everyone get out of the water, that's what happens here. Right, no, I've not. Really selling um, South Australia here, Lisa. With the uh, you got you've got spiders, you've got snakes that just cruise past railways, heading straight to your house, and then now you've got sharks that are just you know need helicopters and and aeroplanes to scare them off. It's like a battle zone where you are. Anyway, (laughs) okay. (laughs) It isn't all that bad. I've 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 seen five snakes in the whole four years that I've lived here, and a handful right. of spiders. Um, I have seen some some shark fins, and really? I have had to get out of the water a few times when the shark when when the shark spotters has siren has gone off as well. So come to Adelaide, 
to see wildlife. Um, okay, cool. So you touched on how your life is much better now you uh, live in Perth versus Wales, obviously. <laughs> and on a typical sort of Saturday or Sunday when you have your days off, what might you do? Um, Sundays at the moment have been football because Lacey has been playing AFL. But she had her last game last week, so our Sundays are completely free as of this weekend. Um, so yeah, we this weekend I think we're just going to go to the zoo because it's Jude's birthday next week. You're going to but, South Australia, pardon? You're going to Lisa's, are you? <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So just like the beach, we'll go to the beach, or we'll go up to Kings Park and take a picnic. Uh, we did do a serpentine a couple of weeks ago, and that's got the lovely waterfalls and just lovely walks. So, yeah, we just try and make the most of the day, like the weekends, and just get out and do things. What's the weather scheduled this weekend in, in, in Perth? This weekend is 21 or 22, I think. But and and that, rain that, all week. that's... Um normal for you like like is that like normal or is that gone a bit hotter because for me and lisa like we're i don't know about you lisa but i'm in shorts and a t-shirt today and it's 20 we've got 23 in melbourne which is which is a really beautiful spring day there's not a cloud in the sky and saturday and sunday are going to stick to the you know the um the mid-20s which is perfect what about you Lee? yeah same same here i think it's going to be like 29 on sunday Oh my god! And, and I think twenty seven tomorrow when I go and watch the football words when I go and watch Port Adelaide win. Just got to get out that house of yours, Lisa, in that dangerous environment. <laughs> you know, make sure you're in a cage. We'll, we'll put you in a dark tank. Make sure, make sure, all right. So, the, so it's it's amazing, isn't it? So it looks like Melbourne and South Australia have a little bit of better weather than uh, than WA. Well, and we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, that never happens. For once. For once, yeah. For once. I've just looked now. It's twenty degrees today, but it is. It's cloudy. Like it's. There's no sun today. Yeah. Um. Okay. So last. So last question, Lily. Um. You've been here for about eight months. Do you think yes. you're settled yet? Um. I wouldn't say hundred percent completely settled. Um. I feel like once we get to summer, I think that is going to make everything just feel so much different because even though we did a little bit of summer when we arrived we were so busy sorting like Centrelink bank accounts cars we didn't really get to appreciate the summer so yeah I'm not quite fully settled but I feel like this summer now I think that'll be the making of it yeah um summer here is really really good so the kids break up for school um depending on what state you live so here in south australia they break up i think they come kind of second week in december and then they go back right at the end of january so i think they have about seven weeks off and i think the weather here is probably similar to perth in the summer just dry and warm every yeah. day um it's grass and you can just go to the beach all the time and stuff so good yeah. Bring on a nice hot Aussie summer. That's what I'm hoping this oh, year. I Beautiful cannot hot. wait. We've got yeah. our family coming over as well, so it's just going to be the best. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Neely, you've been absolutely amazing. Um, thank you. As always. Lisa, always a pleasure. So thank you for joining our podcast. Neely, you've been absolutely amazing. Lisa, as always, thank you so much uh, for joining us on the podcast. It's been really interesting. And we'll catch up with you shortly. Thanks, guys, for listening. Over and out. Thanks. Bye. Bye.